Claw Code has been my go-to coding agents for the last couple months. And with a high interest of Claw Code over time, in this video specifically, I'm gonna show you tips and tricks on how you can be able to 20X the results of using Claw Code. Now, for this video specifically, it's all about how you can be able to improve your productivity and results with Claw Code. But if you haven't get started with Claw Code or no idea how you can be able to start, you can check out this video that I made called Claw Code from Zero to Pro, the ultimate 2025 guide, where I show you how you can be able to set this up and how you can be able to get onboarded with Claw Code completely from scratch. So if you're interested, check that video out, which I'll link it in the description below. But for this video specifically, I'm going to first thing first show you how we can be able to install this and be able to initialize our projects using Claw Code first. And then we're going to take a look at different types of development modes. For example, using like the Carol Spectrum and developments or the planning mode or also the YOLO mode here to perform different types of development tasks. And then we're going to take a look at some tips and tricks on using the core features on how we can be able to create our tasks and also how we can be able to use the hooks feature and also the commands here to better improve our productivity. Then we're also going to take a look at some advanced tools like SuperCloud and also sub agents here to create a specialized AI agents here to perform different types of tasks in our development workflows. Then lastly, we're also going to take a look at the session management, how we can be able to manage our context, how we can be able to resume different types of conversations and export the conversations to different sub agents or different large language models to carry on with our developments. So pretty much that's what we're going to cover in this video. If you're interested, Let's get into it. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we're gonna install Claw Code extension onto our coding IDE. So here in our VS Code, I search for Claw Code. Here you can see I have Claw Code extension installed. But once we have this installed, you can click on the Claw Code icon and we can run Claw Code inside of our IDE. So inside of our Claw Code session, we can start to initialize our project whenever we have a brand new project here. So here is gonna initialize a Claw.md file with the code base documentation for this application. So let me show you what this application does. So here, if I were to open my terminal, start the application, you can see that currently it start on 3001. Simply is a simple calling application that we can interact with the large language model. So here you can see the AI assistant started to ask me some questions and I say, hi there, how's it going? And is able to capture my emotions and send it to a large language model to generate the response. So back to the code here, you can see that if I were to initialize our project, right? So this is what the application does, is able to understand what this project does and list out the do's on how to understand that project. So explore the project structures, the package.json file and understand the dependencies, the existing documentations, and create a comprehensive cloud.md file. So here you can see this is the cloud.md file and it gives you the project overview and everything you need to know about this project. So things like the development commands and everything for the architecture and so on. So whenever we have conversation with Claw Code, it's able to reference to this cloud.md file to understand the project structure before it starts to apply or make any changes. So here, once we have our cloud.md file, now it's time for us to talk about how we can be able to have Claw Code follow the spec-driven development, where it's gonna plan things before it starts to execute the task. So here I add additional prompt for the cloud.md file to plan and and review every time before it start to work. So here you can see before it start to begin the work, it's gonna write a detailed implementation plan inside of a .md file. And this plan should be a very clear and detailed breakdown of the implementation steps. Now the goal here is that it should give you a reason behind the approach and also a list of tasks and focus on the MVP here, avoid over planning and making sure that we do follow the plan and review before it starts to implement. And for implementation here, we always wanna make sure to attach a detailed description of the changes that we made for the plan and also making sure that we keep track of the progress and the steps that is being made so that the other engineers can be able to pick things up based on the plans that we have. So pretty much that's the prompts that we wanna add and it's very similar to the Caro spec driven development where we have the requirements, design, and also the task lists. So basically once we have this additional prompt added, pretty much we can have Claw Code to follow this approach to follow this spectrum of development here. All right, so once we have the prompt added, then instead of a Claw Code, let's say if we wanna build a beautiful UI UX for our current AI calling for an application, help me to break down into key components and put them together in the end. And what I usually do is whenever I try to implement a new feature, for example, like this, I will always try to do the plan mode. So here I can be able to do shift tab and here, if I were to shift tap again, you can see that here I can be able to switch to the plan mode and it's gonna start planning before it starts to execute the tasks. So here, I'm just gonna send this request and here, let's take a look at what it does here. All right, so first thing first, here you can see, start to read through all the components that we have inside of our current projects. And here you can see, eventually is able to use a tool called Web Research here. And by default, for every clock host session, you can see that these are all the tools that we can be able to use. Things like the Web Research, 
the web fetch to fetch content from a URL, right? So it's able to call those tools to perform some actions. You can see that for this clock of session is able to do the web's research to find the trends for the UX and UI design, and also for related UI for the AI conversation interface, and is able to find the dribble.com voice calling UI and here you can see it's fetching that requirements and come up with a enhancement plan for the UI UX design. So once we look through all the plan here, once everything looks good, then we can be able to start to auto accept this edits and we can be able to start to look at the next step. All right, so now you can see that currently it's still building, but you can see that it creates a task, the MD file, which currently you can see that it's a beautiful UI UX enhancement task and it shows you exactly what are the things that are completed for implementation. So foundational components are completed the core interface enhancement are completed and also the advanced features is currently in process. So things like the visualizer, the uh, voice pause components, things like that, which currently you can see is still in progress, which we will view this whole thing once everything is fully finished by clock code. And of course, if you're tired of like having to say yes every time when clock code is doing this, I can we can also be able to run this in a YOLO mode. For example, if I were to do Claude dangerously skip permissions, I can be able to run this in YOLO mode. Since we already have the enhancement.md file, uh, we're just gonna say continue where we left off for the enhancement plan and please complete it. So now you can see it starts to look through where it left off and it's gonna complete those tasks one by one here without having to ask permissions every single time. So now if we were to look at the enhancement doc, you can see that everything is completed for phase four, phase three, everything. Okay, so once we have everything that is completed, then what we can do is we can start our application again and let's take a look at what the result look like. So here I'm just going to do npm run dev and then here you can see this is what the result look like for the application, which overall the result looks much more better compared to the last one, which here you can see we have some cool animations even for the uh, message sent from the assistant. So you can see that we have those animations whenever those messages are prompted. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is hooks. So hooks, you can think of it like programmatically run things whenever claw code performs some actions. So here you can see there's a couple of things that we can do. So basically this is structure inside of hooks, which we can be defined inside of our settings.local.json file, which is located here. So here you can see I have created a hooks object. So whenever claw code stops, right? So maybe it could be finishing responding things. Uh, whenever you finish, it's going to trigger this hook, which here in this hook is going to trigger this command for playing a system sound instead of our local machine. So here, let me give you an example. So if I were to start claw code here and I'm just gonna say hi, you can see that it starts to play a system sound after it's finished responding. But the most interesting part about hooks is that the customization here can be endless. So let's say if you wanna run a hook script for a specific project, for example, so whenever there is a write or edit, when it matches this pattern, it's going to trigger this hook to, for example, check for the styling to make sure that everything's working. And in terms of hook events, we have pre-tool use, which means before we use a tool, things like these we can be able to watch for, or things like after a tool is being used, we can also be able to trigger that as well. And it can also listen for notifications, user prompt submits. So whenever a user submits a prompt, before Cloud process it, it's going to trigger that event. So you can see that there's so many things that we can watch for or listen to using the hook function from Anthropic Cloud Code. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is slash commands. So these commands are built-in commands that we can use inside of Cloud Code. So for example, things like we can be able to clear the conversation histories. We can also use the cost here to check the token usage and also the init functions that we used earlier in the video to initialize our projects or view the pull request comments and request for pull request reviews, things like that we can be able to use inside of our development workflows. So we can also be able to create our own commands here. So let's say inside of our projects, I start a new clock code session and here inside of our dot cloud folder, I create a folder called commands. And here inside of this, I create a dot MD file called uppercase dot MD file. And inside of this dot MD file, I will basically instruct it to please respond in uppercase. So I, every time when I, um, you know, use this command, for example, so inside of clock code, let's say if I were to use uppercase command and please respond in uppercase format, so here, let's say if I were to say hi there, for example, the response is generated in the uppercase format. And here is gonna be very useful because whenever we have prompts that we wanna reuse, we can actually do this by creating a custom commands here to reuse those prompts every time for our development, right? So maybe it could be like QA for adding a testing, or maybe it could be things like creating a 
uh, block of code or components, we can be able to save those prompts into commands and reuse those commands every single time for our development here. And what's really cool is that there's also a framework that extends from claw code with specialized commands and personas for different types of development works during your development process. And you can see that if we were to scroll down, there's some key features that commands that we can use for different type of tasks for development. And you can also switch to different personas for different specialists when it tackles different types of problems. For example, if you encounter a architect problem where you're doing the system design part, you can switch to the architect personas. Or if you're doing the front end side of things, you can switch to front end. Or if you're doing backend, you can switch to the backend personas for different specialists to work on different type of specialized tasks. And if you're curious on how to use this, then you can check out this video that I made called SuperCloud, where you can be able to upgrade your cloud code workflow with SuperCloud method. So if you're interested, check that video out, which I'll link it in the description below. All right, so now I wanna talk about some commands that are very useful, but not being mentioned by a lot of people. So one of them is resume function, where we can be able to resume a conversation. So right now you can see that I start a new conversation with Claude, but let's say you want to resume the previous conversation or the past conversation that you had with clock code, you can use this and be able to view all the past conversation that you had. And let's say if I want to go to the conversation that I had 16 hour ago, I can be able to go here and here I can be able to continue with that conversation based on what I had before. And what's really cool is that there's also a export feature where you can be able to export the current conversation to a file or clipboard and be able to pass the conversation memory to another large language model. For example, I can be able to do the export here and here I can be able to save this to a file or I can be able to copy this clipboard. So I can be able to save this to a file here and here you can see it's gonna give you a name and if I were to enter this, it's going to create that file. And here you can see this is the file that it creates. But obviously this process for exporting the conversation and pass it to another coding agent here is gonna be very complex. And that's why I wanna introduce to the sponsor of this video, ByRover. They have built a central memory layer for modern dev teams using coding agents. Now, chances are you have been in this situation. You're coding with an AI IDE like cursor or clock code, and you have spent all your time carefully describing your project context. But the next day, when you start a new session, all of the knowledge is gone and you have to waste time explaining everything from scratch, or maybe you're working with your team, but all the valuable lessons from past interactions, the best practices, the bug fixes are all siloed. They aren't shared across the team, so your colleagues agents keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And you know that basic rule files like claw.md file just aren't enough for the massive code base. Or maybe you start in cursor, switch over to Gemini CLI or any other agents, and none of that context carry over. But by over here solves all that. What if your AI agents can actually remember all that context permanently? With ByteRover, your project knowledge is saved. Everything from high-level programming concepts to specific business logics, past interactions, bug fixes, even the model's own reasoning steps. This gives your agents maximum context, enabling smarter, more accurate code as your project grows. You can think of it as a unified memory layer shared across all your favorite coding IDEs like Cursor, Claw Code, VS Code and more. So it scales right alongside your code base. For all my fellow open source fans, ByteRover just launched Cypher, an open source memory layer that you can plug directly into your IDE with zero configuration. Both of these tools are designed to make your coding agents more intelligent and genuinely useful. It's completely free to get started. So to check out the link in the description to try it out. All right, so the other one I don't want to talk about is how we can be able to use the bash mode. So here we also have the bash mode where we can be able to run any commands inside of our terminal. So if we want to run a commands inside of our terminal, we have to cancel this, right? But instead of cancel this, we can actually be able to do this like this. For example, if I want to do npm run uh, install, I can be able to npm install without having to stop the clock code session using the bash mode right here, right? So if I do the exclamation mark, you can see that the bash mode is on and I can be able to run any commands inside of my terminal using this. And what's really cool about this is that cloud code is able to save that memory inside of this conversation. It knows exactly what you did for this project so that it has context on what are the things that are gonna do next. All right, so next one we're gonna talk about is the sub agents in cloud code where you can have or create a specialized sub agents in cloud code that can be able to perform a specific task in the entire development workflows. So for example, recently I have made a video called sub agents here, which you can check this out, where simply you can see here that I have created multiple sub agents in cloud code. And here you can see I have multiple sub agents all running in parallel, where you can see here we have our front end agents, back end agent, and also a database agents 
all running in parallel to develop a full stack project using the subagent feature in Claw Code. And pretty much the way how subagent works is that we first have our user here interacting with Claw Code. And here, let's say the Claw Code here gives instructions, it's going to look at its task and be able to delegate the work to a subagent here by passing the task to the subagents. And the subagent here will basically using its tools like MCB tools or specific tasks or a specific system prompts that it's going to follow to basically complete a task. And each subagent here has its own context window. So it's not going to use up any main context window from the main Claw Code session. And the other benefit is that each subagent here is fine tuned with specific domains, and all the subagents here have the options to work across different projects and shared across the team with consistent workflows. And lastly, like I mentioned, each subagent here can access to different tools like MCP servers that I can call to perform any tasks. So, pretty much, that's how the subagent works in Claw Code. And if you're interested to learn more about subagents, you can check out this video that I made called the Claw Code Subagents Building a Full Stack Application with Your Own AI Teams. In that video specifically, I show you how you can be able to create your own subagents and be able to delegate different types of tasks to a different subagents. All right, so pretty much that's it for this video. So if you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.